Hello, my name is Jussi Enkovara. This is the second part of a gentler introduction to parallel program with MPI. MPI is an abbreviation of the message passing interface, which is the de facto standard for parallel programming on distributed memory machines. In this part of the tutorial, we will learn about initialization of an MPI program and learn how to pass messages between different processing units. The underlying idea of the message passing program model is that individual processes run independent copies of the program. And these processes communicate with other processes by exchanging messages. MPI, the message passing interface, is a standardized application program interface for communication between separate processes. In the heart of MPI is the MPI library with some 120 functions. We will see how programs are parallelized by calling these functions. We will also see that in general only a very small number of these 120 functions are actually needed to write a perfectly good parallel program. In MPI, a parallel program is launched as a set of independent identical processes. These processes contain the same program code and instructions. The processes can reside on the same or different nodes or even on different computers. MPI assigns each process rank, which is used as an identification of the process. The processes can perform different tasks and handle different data based on their rank. All the variables and data structures are local to the individual process. The processes can exchange data by sending and receiving messages. We will learn in a minute how to do this, but first, let's set up a parallel program without any communication. Now, we will write our first dummy MPI program. Every MPI program started by calling the function MPI init and ended with the MPI finalize. Nothing should happen before the MPI init nor after the MPI finalize, like this. Then, let us identify the individual processes. Each process will get to know its unique ID number by calling the function mpi.com.rank. I'll insert it here. This mpi.com.bold is something called a communicator. It's the default communicator set up by the mpi init. It contains all the processes. It is also possible to define and manipulate other communicators. Then we would like to see how many processes are available for the program in total. This is carried out by calling the function mpi.com.size, like this. Let us add some printouts. Let us introduce yet another function, MPI barrier, which blocks the execution until all the processes have reached this part of the code. Now let's compile and run the code. Any premonitions? What will the program print out? Well, this simple program just launched four independent processes and each process printed out its unique ID or rank. Now, bear in mind that the same binary will be executed in different processing units at the same time. Unless told otherwise, all the processes thus do exactly the same thing. We need to refer to the individual ranks of the processes to make them execute different things still at the same time. Let us modify the program such that the total number of ranks is printed out only by the rank 0, which is often called the root process.
C, I bet you got the idea. As you have probably guessed, having completely non-interacting processes isn't often very useful. In most cases, there is some data that is needed across all the executing units. The communication in MPI is carried out by exchanging messages. In point-to-point -point communication, one task sends a message and the other one receives it. The rest of the processes do not know anything about the communication. It is really between one process and another. So, one guy packs a letter in an envelope and sends the letter by calling the function MPI send. The communication takes place when, but not before, the destination process calls the function MPI receive. Now, let's send a message that contains the rank of the sending process to another process. Suppose we want to do this from rank 1 to rank 3. Now, I will restructure the code such that rank 1 calls the MPI send. The arguments to the MPI send function are as follows. First, the send buffer, which is the data we wish to send, which could be a variable or an array. Then, the count argument, which is the number of entries in the send buffer. Then, the data type of the data. Then, the rank of the destination process. Then, a tag argument used to distinguish between messages. And finally, the communicator where the operation takes place. In Fortran, like in all other MPI routines, this routine has an additional argument, the return value. In MPI, each message has to be received. This is done by calling the function MPI receive. Now we will make the rank 3 to receive the message sent by rank 1. The arguments needed by the MPI receive function are very similar to those of MPI send. The only difference being an argument after the communicator parameter known as the status object. It contains information about the message and the sender. It is also possible not to store the status object at all. Okay, we have now touched the very basic ingredients of MPI programming. Launching a set of independent processes and making one process to communicate some data to another process. That is, sending a message from one task to another. To summarize this part of the tutorial, I want you to remember four important points. One, in MPI, a set of independent processes is launched. Two, the processes are identified by rank. Three, data is always local to the process. Four, processes can exchange data by sending and receiving messages. The MPI library contains functions for obtaining information about the communication environment. In this tutorial, we use the functions mpi.com.rank and mpi.com.size. It also contains various possibilities for communication between processes. This time, we consider the so-called point-to-point communication using the functions mpi.send and mpi.receive. In the next part, we are going to go through more ways of communicating and controlling the flow of the program. Right now, it is time to try to exercise this.